All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 27. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue comparing fractions. Uh, this time the fractions are gonna be greater than one. So sometimes we're gonna have to take those improper fractions, although we don't call them improper fractions anymore. Um, but we're gonna take those improper fractions, converting them into mixed numbers, then we're gonna compare. Uh, we're gonna use tape diagrams, area model, plus we're gonna start using that standard algorithm Although, uh, we're not going to be expecting the students to have total mastery over that standard algorithm. They're still going to be able to use the scaffolds of the area model or the tape diagram. So let's get started. All right, the first set of directions say draw a tape diagram to model each comparison. Now, technically speaking, parents and teachers, this area model is, an, is a technique that will work all the time where and well and technically the tape diagram would work all the time also but there are times there are very specific times where using the area model is a whole lot easier than the tape diagram so this tape diagram uh, for this particular application when we're comparing fractions has some limited uh, usefulness whereas the area model works all the time. Uh, so I'm going to try and point that out because I don't think Eureka Math or Engage New York really explains that very well. So the idea of the tape diagram is you're going to draw a tape diagram for the fractional portion of these two numbers. So we're going to draw a tape diagram for three-fourths and we're going to draw a tape diagram for seven-eighths. And the idea is you have to draw an identical tape diagram for the two. So I'm going to try, and my, I tell you, my tape diagrams never look really a whole lot like tapes. They kind of look these like worms or something. So anyway, so then you draw your fractions. So here's three-fourths, and you always start, well, you don't always have to, but I tend to start with a fraction that has the smaller um, number for the denominator, which means it's going to have the larger pieces. Fourths are larger than eighths, so I always draw the fraction that has the larger pieces, and I start with that one first, and I don't know why I do that, just because. And here's my three-fourths. There's three-fourths. And now I'm going to draw eighths. Now, as I'm drawing the eighths, I know that I could take each of these fourths and cut them into two pieces, and now I have eighths. So I'm going to do my best to recreate the fourths. Now I'm going to cut eighths, cut each of those into two pieces. And now I need to color in seven eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. And then since I just said, if I cut each of these original fourths into two pieces, I get eighths. So I'm going to cut that into two pieces, that into two pieces, that into two pieces, and that into two pieces. So instead of having three fourths, I now have six eighths. I now have six eighths. And I can see that six eighths is less than seven eighths. In fact, I could have seen it by just looking at the picture. I could have seen that uh, six eighths is less than seven, or I could have seen that three fourths is less than seven eighths. But anyway, I got a common denominator. And I can see that 6 eighths is less than 7 eighths, so that means 3 fourths is less than 7 eighths, so that means 2 and 3 fourths is less than 7 eighths. So what I did was I used a tape diagram because the direction said so, and I went so far as to use that tape diagram to get common denominators. I didn't actually have to get common denominators in this problem because I could clearly see that 7 eighths was larger than 3 fourths, but I used the tape diagram to get common denominators and that's all good. So the other idea would be to use area model. And the question might be, well then why are we using an area model? Um, why do we have to use an area model? Well, the area model oftentimes 
is easier to use than a tape diagram in terms of getting your common denominators. See, the whole key is we want to get common denominators. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's do question B. So we already have 2 and 3 fifths, 2 and 2 thirds, so the whole numbers are the same. So now we need to look at the fractions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle or an area. It, it could be a rectangle, it could be a square, it doesn't really matter. And I want two of them because I want to make one for three-fifths and one for two-thirds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three-fifths. And the way I'm going to draw three-fifths is I'm going to cut vertical lines and I'm going to cut those into five strips. So I need to use four slices to make five strips. So parents and teachers, that's a huge area where students make our mistakes, which is they um, see the number five, and so they might make five cuts, but that turns into sixths, not fifths. So big, pay attention to that one. And then I'm going to shade in three of those fifths. One, two, three. All right. Now for this two-thirds over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it into three pieces, but I'm going to go horizontal this time instead of vertical. So there's my cuts, and I'm going to go shade in two of those three. So there's one, there's two, and there we go. Now, the beauty of the area model is it's really easy to get a common denominator. All I have to do is take these fifths and cut them into thirds. Boom, boom. And then I have to take these thirds and cut them into fifths. One, two, three, four, five. And so what do I get? Well, instead of three fifths, I now have nine fifteenths. How do I get nine fifteenths? Well, I can see that nine little blue units are shaded in and I could see that there's 15 pieces total, so 9 fifteenths. And then over here, I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can see that we now have 10 fifteenths. So that automatically tells me that 2 thirds is larger than 3 fifths. So 2 and 2 thirds is larger than 2 and 3 fifths. So we're, we've got that. So the point of having the area model and the tape diagram is sometimes, hey, just drawing the tape is good enough to see that one fraction is larger than another, and we don't really need common denominators. Uh, but tape diagrams are useful when one denominator is easily turned into the other denominator. That's really when tape diagrams are at their best. But when you have these denominators where you can't turn a 3 into a 5 or you can't turn a 5 into a 3 real easily, uh, area model is really easy for getting common denominators. You just take one fraction, make vertical slices, take the other fraction, make horizontal slices, and boom, you're practically there. So here it says compare each pair of fractions using any strategy. Now, it is possible, parents and teachers, for your students to look at these two fractions and immediately know that 6 and a half is larger than 6 and 3 eighths because we're using a benchmark. Half as our benchmark and 3 eighths is definitely less than half because 4 eighths is half. Um, but I'm going to be a little bit more, I don't know, rigorous, and I want to use an actual method. I could use the tape diagram method because 2 could easily be turned into 8. Um, or I could use the area model. Uh, but I'm also going to show you yet another model, which is uh, we're going to ignore the 6s for a moment because the 6s are the same, right? So I can see that for 1 half, if I took the 1 and the 2 and I multiplied them each by 4, that gives me 4 eighths. So that tells me that 6 and a half can be thought of as 6 and 4 eighths. 
And I and six and three eighths is fine. That's just three six and three eighths. And we can clearly see that six and four eighths is larger than six and three eighths because four is larger than three. So that tells us that six and a half is larger than six and three eighths. So this is that real standard algorithm where you're getting common denominators through multiplying. Um, the numerator and the denominator by some common factor. Uh, so let's practice that again. Uh, let's do uh, this question over here. And since the whole numbers are the same, that means all we have to do is we have to look at the fractions, 5 sixths and 11 twelfths. And I can see that we can easily turn 6 into 12 by multiplying by 2. So that means I'm going to take 5 and 6. I'm going to multiply each of those by 2. And that gives me 10 twelfths. So now we end up with, instead of saying 7 and 5 sixths, we say 7 and 10 twelfths. And 7 and 11 twelfths is fine. It's just right there. Now we have common denominators. And we can easily see that 7 and 11 twelfths is larger than ten, uh, 7 and 10 twelfths. And so that tells us that 7 and 5 sixths is less than 7 and 11 twelfths. So once again, parents and teachers, both of these problems can be kind of solved using logic. So your students may want to use logic on these. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I really am going to try and show you some sort of standard um, algorithm to be a little bit more rigorous. So the first thing I need to do is I need to think about 10 thirds and I need to turn 10 thirds into a mixed number. I'm gonna, for the sake of speed, I'm just gonna jump in and say it's three and a third, but parents and teachers, you may want to pause this video and make sure your students know how to connect those two. Uh, 10 fourths, 10 fourths is two and two fourths and automatically, I am now done. I now know that three and a third is larger than two and two fourths. We don't need to do any math. We don't need to compare our common denominators. We, we don't need to do anything because automatically, since three is larger than two, case closed. Now, over here on this problem, 12 fourths, well, that converts to three. And 10 thirds, we already know from the previous problem converts to three and a third automatically we know that three is less than three and a third because the the whole numbers are the same but this guy has a little bit of a boost with that extra fraction and that wraps up fourth grade module five lesson 27 where students are comparing fractions uh, specifically fractions greater than one but they're starting to use that standard algorithm by finding common denominators some of these common denominators are coming from tape diagrams, while others are coming from the area model. And yet others, the most standard official way is to get common denominators.